Welcome to the Southampton International Boat Show 2021. Now the boat behind me, well, it needs little introduction. Almost the flagship for Halberg Rassi, the 57 foot Rassi. Now I absolutely love these boats. They have a huge pedigree, equally comfortable in the tropics as they would be on the Northwest Passage. Let's go inside, take a look and see what we think. Hey everyone, you have me again. Let's take a look at this Halberg Rassi 57. This is a center cockpit boat. Definitely really handy when you are looking at a boat for crossing oceans. That center cockpit will be really comfortable, really safe, and it really is ideal for those ocean crossings. Because we're looking at a 57 foot boat, so a really big boat, we've got plenty of space. You've got a big aft platform as well with those massive lazarettes there. You've got an opening hatch that goes into the aft cabin, the master cabin. We'll have a look at that in just a little bit. And you've also got this huge swim platform which is operated by a button uh, which is stationed at the transom there. The cockpit itself you have twin helms which is fantastic and you've got the space to do that on such a big boat. Now despite being 57 foot and obviously quite big it does seem that this boat might be quite easy to sail. All the lines come back to one of those helm stations and all the winches are fully electric as you would expect with a touch button control. The controls are actually not only at the winches themselves but also at the helm. So whoever's helming can trim the sails at the push of a button. Very very handy and very easy. You've obviously got all your other controls at the helm stations. You've got the electric windlass, you've got chart plotters engine controls, all of your instruments, everything that you need at the helm stations, making it very easy. We've also got that hard dodger, which is kind of a hallmark element of Halbert Grassi. It's really handy again when you're in those rough seas, but it does have that opening hatch. So when you are at anchor and it's nice and calm and you want to get some breeze through the cockpit, you can just easily open that hatch in the hard dodger. Perfect. Let's go inside now and take a look at the interior of this Halberg Grassi 57. There are customizable options, so let's just take a look at what this particular owner has done. We've got the two armchairs there on port. I really like those armchairs actually. I think that maybe they do lend themselves to having a little sit down and a cup of tea at the end of a long passage and that really does appeal to me. We've also got good ventilation in this boat so you've got those two forward facing opening hatches. They would capture the breeze at anchor really, really well. You've also got a flat screen TV on a motorised mount so that would slide down behind that settee there. Huge dining table with lots of seating, some storage in the dining table which is a nice touch and that leads us directly into this linear galley. Let's head into the galley now. This is a linear galley, so loads of space. I really like these linear galleys on these larger monohulls. I think that they're very practical. Obviously, you can just tuck yourself in there and in any sea state, you'll stay upright, which is very important. And you can just brace yourself between the two sides of the galley. Loads of storage space. You've also got a couple of opening hatches in the galley, which is obviously crucial. Now moving aft into the aft cabin, that door you just saw open, uh, we'll go back in there in a moment. So let's just take a quick look at the master cabin here. There's a few configuration options. This owner has gone with like a workstation in the aft cabin. For someone like Nick and I who work for ourselves and work wherever it is that we are, that might be really handy. Loads of additional storage in here, as you can see, and there's also some good ventilation with several opening hatches opening both up and to the side as well. So I think you'd get some good breeze in here. The master cabin has its own kind of ensuite shower room with a separate shower stool. Again, you've I feel like I'm a broken record. A separate shower stool is so important with liverboards and on a boat this size, you would absolutely expect that anyway. Now heading into, yes, it is an engine room. I can almost hear Nick jumping up and down with glee and I'm sure that his heart rate kind of increased as he stepped into this room. It really is his dream scenario here and I think he'd buy this boat just for this engine room. And this is what a boat of this size affords you. It's like Notre Dame Cathedral. It is huge, this engine room. Every mechanic, every marine mechanic's dreams, a fantastically easily accessible filtration system easy access to all aspects of the engine as well as the plumbing the electrics the charging system it is all complete with a fire suppression system this is exactly what i want from an engine room well done halberg rassi 
Let's go forward now. So this is the cabin in the V-berth. I mean, very, very spacious for a forward cabin. Large uh, island bed, so very easy to get in and out. I mean, again, this is a 57 foot monohole, so you would expect all of these cabins to be really spacious. Quite a bit of uh, storage in here, and you've got like a double opening hatch situation. You've also got a Pullman's berth just on starboard and you've got kind of like a double bed underneath and a single berth on top with a little bit of storage there as well and an opening hatch. The bunk is obviously an option so you can have this berth without the bunk if you don't feel that you need that extra berth. Just the one hatch in here so if you close the door you're not going to have any airflow in here. You need two opening hatches to create a draft. And yes, I know I'm slightly obsessed about ventilation. I guess if you're keeping this boat in the northern climates, then it's less of an issue. If you're taking it to the tropics, well, it's something that I'd be thinking about. The four cabin and that Pullman's berth share a heads, which has a separate shower stool. And I personally think Pullman berths are really handy on an ocean going boat. They're a very comfortable place to sleep when it's a little bit more lively and you've got some big seas and they also fit a few extra crew members in. And when you don't need extra crew, you can use them for storage. Let's take a look at the nav station now. This is kind of tucked away just next to the companion way. It looks like a really comfortable place to sit. And I think in big seas, you've got a little bit of protection there. You wouldn't necessarily get thrown to the other side of the boat like I've seen with other designs. So I think it would be quite safe and comfortable. You do not have the visibility from this nav station that you would in say a raised saloon. So you couldn't necessarily keep watch here, but you've got all of your instrumentation here. You've got everything that you need and it looks like comfortable place to sit as well. Let's take a meander down the side decks now. You can see that we've got the Genoa track there. You can option a self-tacking jib if you wish. Uh, you've also got quite a bit of teak. Obviously, this is a large boat, so a lot of teak going on. Harbour Grassi are now very recently offering an eco-friendly teak option. You've got an attachment point there as well as a built-in bowsprit, which you can't really see from this camera angle. You just have to trust me. So you've got some options there as to different sail configurations. According to Harbour Grassi, you can achieve 8.75 knots at a 90 degree sailing angle with only 10 knots of true wind so that gives you an idea as to the performance. I think we're all wondering about the efficacy of those solar panels being positioned there they would get a lot of shade on them so unsure about whether that's truly the best option. Let's look at some of the particulars now you've got a maximum length overall of 18.44 meters or just over 60 foot the whole length itself is 17.44 meters and 57.4 feet you have a beam of 5.1 meters or just under 17 feet and a draft of 2.43 meters or eight feet although it is apparently available as a shallow draft version however grassy don't specify what that draft would actually be the displacement is 28 tons and you have 181 square meters or just under 2,000 feet of sail area with an optimized main and genoa the Hamburg Grassi 57, beautiful boat, 1.6 million plus VAT, but for those of you who have got the means, why wouldn't you? It is beautiful in every single way. Like the sister, it's the 44, it is supremely well built. They have such a pedigree of making boats to take families comfortably around the world. Absolutely love these, absolutely love them. So what are my thoughts? Look, there are things about this boat that I absolutely love. There is no doubt that as an ocean going vessel, you can't really get better. The cockpit is really spacious, very safe, very comfortable. You've got that dodger, that hard dodger, which opens up when you're at anchor. So that's perfect. You've got lots of really good protection in that cockpit. So that is a huge plus. I think sailing performance wise, you would expect decent sailing performance out of Harbour Grassi. They've got such a long pedigree of building solid, very, very capable yachts that can literally take you anywhere. I mean, many Harbour Grassis have circumnavigated, many have gone to Patagonia, the Northwest Passage, certainly sailed Northern Europe, uh, as well as of course, many go to the tropics and, and do full circumnavigations. 
I also feel like there's just something a little bit old fashioned about the interior design of this boat. The woodwork, the timber is not as beautiful as you can get elsewhere. It's certainly very solid feeling um, and it feels very capable as you're walking around, but it just doesn't have that kind of elegance and beauty that you would get in, let's say, for example, a Discovery or a Southerly. For someone like me who will never be able to afford one of these boats, it's a bit of a moot point. If I had the money, would I buy a Halberg Grassy 57 to take me around the world? I'm not sure. There are so many other options at this price point and in this kind of size range. I think that I would be casting my net a little bit wider, but certainly this is a great option. Very capable boat. And look, those armchairs alone would tempt me. I mean, who doesn't want an armchair on their boat? As always, we are very keen to hear your thoughts. Obviously, there is no such thing as a perfect boat and everyone has a different set of compromises and likes and dislikes. So please let us know down below what you think of this boat and we will see you next week with a brand new episode. Thanks very much for watching.